Welcome to Serpente Sunday for March 12th, 2023, and welcome to Daylight Savings Time in the United States. I'm Lori with Behavior Education at Spirit Keeper Animal Sanctuary, and I'm so excited Daylight Savings Time starts today because I love it when it stays light longer, and I don't care how dark it stays in the morning. So all the extra daylight is going to be fantastic, not only for me, but for the animals as well. What we're doing today is a fun activity that I like to call let's put trash in an exercise pen really it's not trash yet i don't think until it actually goes into the trash can or out into the dumpster or gets picked up by the trash truck i think before it goes into the trash can these items are still very usable and it's not trash yet until you actually throw it away so i have collected a bunch of items a pile of items from the last 24 hours that came from various sources that I was going to throw away. And prior to throwing them away, I'm going to first put them into an exercise tent for the snakes to explore. I will add that our cats also like to play with or explore or sniff or interact with many of these items, but this isn't for our cats today. This is for our snakes. Now behind me, I have two sizes of exercise pens. One is larger, one is smaller. I actually have one that's even bigger than this. It's taller and wider than this one that you see here. And I actually have one that is smaller than this that I not only use for an exercise pen for small snakes, but I take some of my bigger snakes to the vet in it. So these are really versatile. I really love them. Uh, I don't know what brand this bottom one is, but this top brand is He Ping, H-E-P-E-E-N-G. I think this brand might be the same. It's just not written on the front. I have several brands and they all work just fine, but I like this brand the best because not only is it sturdy, but it folds up in a rectangle and slips into a suitcase style bag instead of uh, trying to fold it up into a circle and going into a round bag like some of them. So I'm going to grab these things one at a time and show you what I'm putting into the exercise tent. The first two items of trash, not trash yet, are empty dog biscuit containers. So this one is a box and it's empty and it came with dog treats and I emptied the dog treats out and now it's just an empty cardboard box and it's really clean. It hasn't seen the inside of a trash can yet and I'm going to toss that in there. This is a bag that larger dog treats came in and it's fairly clean other than maybe some crumbs from dog treats in it. It has not seen a trash can yet, and it's not um, plastic that an animal could get into and suffocate in. It's sort of a paper bag plastic, and I'm going to stick that in here. Here are three other items that I just emptied in the last 24 hours that now make really good enrichment items. One is a vinyl examination glove box, and I find that snakes, for some reason, really love these empty nitrile, latex, or vinyl glove boxes. So I'm gonna to toss that in there. I also have a empty cat food food container, Delectable Stew Lickable Treat. It had cat food packets in it, now it doesn't. Before it goes into the trash can, it's going to go in here. And then this had dog food cans in it. And it was all wrapped up with plastic wrap. And I took the dog food cans out of this bottom box and I put them in the cabinet we store them in and now I have this box. So I'm gonna to toss that in there as is, but just a note about these, if you turn them upside down, of course the snakes can get on top of them, but if you tear or cut just a little hole in these, now they can also get underneath them without having to push the box um, up to get underneath them. I've created a little tunnel hole for them. I get lots of things delivered on an almost daily basis. And some of them come with this brown paper packaging. And so I like to crumple this up. I don't know if you could hear me over the crumpling. I like to crumple this up and toss it into the exercise tents. 
And not only does it give me satisfaction to hear the snakes in there moving around because as they move around, I can hear the paper crumpling, but the snakes really seem attracted to moving around in this crumpled up paper. They use it a lot. I'm not finished yet. We go through a lot of paper and cardboard in this household. I don't feel as bad about using paper and cardboard because not only can I use it for enrichment items prior to throwing it away, but this is biodegradable and isn't going to harm the environment the way that plastic trash will. So we try to avoid plastic as much as we can here and use cardboard and paper products. So this is just an empty Perry air water box. So I don't buy bottled water in plastic bottles. I buy water in cartons or cans. And so this is just an empty water container or it's an empty box that water came in. These are just two empty boxes that stuff got delivered in. And so they're clean. They're not soiled. Make sure that if you're using delivery boxes, the paper is okay to put in exercise pens, but I wouldn't put plastic into exercise pens. So I take out the plastic and I make sure we're just left with a cardboard box or with uh, actual paper. And so those are gonna get thrown in there. Now you can be creative, right? And you could take these together or attach them together so they stack. You could set them in there in a particular way. And sometimes I do that. You can cut extra holes in them to make fun uh, activities for the snakes. But just for the purposes of this video, I am randomly throwing stuff in here, but believe me, the snakes will investigate all of this and use it no matter how random it is. Okay, this also came with something I ordered and it was part of the box packaging. And this is super fun because you can configure it into a tunnel. You can leave it open and set it like this in the tent. You can set it this way. So it just creates a surface for the snakes to move on. Um, you can pretty much do whatever you want with this. They're not gonna get hurt on it. There's no sharp edges. They uh, can't ingest this huge piece of cardboard. Although a snake, I suppose, could get their teeth caught on cardboard if for some reason they try to eat it. That's why you monitor these activities. So that's gonna go in there and you can also use this as a shield. Like if I wanted to shield one of the windows uh, to make a section less open and give the snake a like a barrier that they felt like they could hide behind, I could do that. I can set it upside down. Um, that is really versatile because it folds. And then this is an empty uh, cardboard water carton. So this is from um, a company called Boxed Water and I get this delivered. So not only can I use the box that the boxed water comes in, but I can also, this is an empty carton. And so you're thinking, well, the snake can't get inside there. Well, a really tiny snake could get inside the drinking hole, but I keep that covered. I don't want a snake getting inside here. Now I could cut this off and I have, I'll show you that in a minute, but it doesn't matter that they can't get inside this. It's a new item that they haven't seen before that they can interact with. Just investigate it or they can climb on top of it or they can push it around with their nose or they can push it um, and get underneath it and push underneath it and roll it around. Um, I'll come back to this in a minute. The same sort of thing applies to these small boxes here. You're looking at these thinking, uh, but a snake can't get inside those tiny boxes. No, they can't, but you know what? They can stick their head inside these boxes and investigate it and they can smell these boxes and they can push these boxes around if it's a burrowing snake. And if you put these boxes in a pile, they can push underneath them. And it's just a texture and a scent and a sensation and just a whole new item just for them to interact with. So now I know somebody's gonna ask me, well, what if they stick their head in there and their body gets stuck? And you can also open both ends of this. So it is possible a snake could stick their head in here and try to pull their whole body through here. And if it's a big, Python Regis or a big Brettles Python, an adult, they're not gonna fit. And this is gonna get stuck on them. That's all right, guess, guess what? It's cardboard. You can totally just rip it open with your hands. You don't have to use a knife. You don't have to use scissors. Say a snake decides to wear this box. All right, so I just ripped the top open and now the snake is not wearing the box. No big deal. That would go the same for this water carton. So sometimes what I'll do with these water cartons 
is I will take the cap off and I'll open them up like you would a carton of milk or a carton of orange juice so that now the front is open. And you can also open the bottom if you want so that a snake could crawl through it or they could just stick their head in it and investigate it. Or if you're using it for a puzzle feeding exercise, you can put the food in here and the snake has to go in here and get it and drag it out. Same thing though, if for some crazy reason the snake tries to fit their whole body in here and gets stuck, no big deal. It's cardboard, it rips right open and now the snake is not stuck. This is just another random box and it came with another great foldable piece that you could fold into a tunnel or you can just leave open and set this way or set this way or set upright. And then you've got now the empty box. Now you can keep all of these empty boxes I'm showing you closed like this. So the snake can crawl in it and most snakes I have could actually almost fit their whole body in here. Um, many of them could, or they can, crawl through it if you open this other end. So if I opened the other end of the box, they could crawl all the way through here and have a big flat square tunnel. And last but not least, what else have I used or created trash from in the last 24 hours? A paper towel roll, classic enrichment item for snakes. Again, so what if the snake sticks their head in here or tries to stick their whole body in here and gets stuck? You can easily rip this open and this actually unwinds from around the snake and yes I've had to do this before one of my adult python regis royal pythons stuck her head in one and decided to try to stick her whole body through a paper towel roll even though she is about 1500 grams which is a pretty decent sized snake no way she was gonna fit through here she was wearing the paper towel roll and what did I do just what I did now I just undid it and then she was free of it I almost forgot I have one more item to put into the exercise tent. So this exercise tent, this enrichment space or activity area would not be complete without a snake to use it. So this is one of my inland carpet pythons. His name is Vegan Bray and he came out of his enclosure just a little while ago and he was climbing on our repurposed parrot tree that we have for the snakes. And so I thought, you know what? This video would not be complete without a snake in it. So let me just go and get Vegan Bray and see if he would like to engage in an enrichment activity in this exercise tent. So let's see if he does. All of these items are brand new trash, meaning none of the snakes have interacted with these items before because I just emptied them within the last 24 hours. So they are gonna smell like whatever was in them or wherever they came from or whatever they've been in contact with between when they were manufactured, packaged, left the warehouse, traveled via UPS or the US Postal Service or FedEx or whoever delivered them to get here and then sat in our house until we emptied them and now they're in the tent. So I can imagine there are all sorts of different smells on these items just organically. Um, I haven't scented any of the items, but you could. So you could take a drop of something like a fruity scent or a drop of lavender oil or vanilla or something that you know is not aversive to the snake, meaning it's not a smell that they dislike and it's not something that would be harmful to them. And you could just drop one drop on a piece of cardboard. And I'm saying one drop because think of how well snakes smell. They have a really enhanced sense of smell and chemo reception. So you don't need a lot of any scent that you would place in here, just a drop would do it. So there he goes. He is in the tent investigating all of these brand new trash, not trash yet items that I have put in here. And what I will do after he's used it for a while, I may leave these items in here for a few days or a week. And if the snakes have had their annual wellness checks and virus testing and they have screened clear and healthy uh, and the snake is from my family of snakes that has been here for a very long time in other words a closed collection of animals then i may let more than one snake interact with all of these items and then after a while i will throw them away for real in a trash can 
and then I will clean the exercise tent out and I will put new trash, not trash items in here. So our trash oftentimes takes a journey into one of these exercise tents or exercise spaces prior to finding itself in the trash can or the dumpster. And I feel good about being able to utilize these items for other things for a while before I actually throw them away. If you have any questions or concerns about this that I can answer, please don't hesitate to contact me at behavioreducationllc at gmail.com or you can always message me on Instagram or Facebook or comment below in the YouTube comments. I thought I'd take this opportunity to share one of the products with you that we use to clean those exercise tents. So these exercise tents are actually primarily designed for dogs um, or cats, but now I see that some companies are also advertising use for reptiles or other small mammals like exotic mammals such as guinea pigs or sugar gliders or chinchillas, etc., to exercise in safely. But I use an accelerated hydrogen peroxide product that is used by veterinarians to wipe out these tents. Now, this is a wipe and they come in different sizes. This is a small size, this is a large size. And then it also comes in a spray. You can also get it in a gallon jug and make your own spray or make your own wipes or just use the liquid. Um, sometimes I'll just pour a little liquid out of the jug in there and wipe it down. There's another similar product called Excel, A-C-C-E-L, and I have not used that one, but it is a similar accelerated hydrogen peroxide product. I know that is used by veterinarians. And so this is what I use to disinfect the tents with. And I just take the wipe and I wipe it out. Now, if a snake has soiled inside the tent, I still wipe it out with this. If they actually soil it with feces or urates while they're exercising in there, I will typically then pour some of the liquid rescue in there or use the spray and I'll clean it a little bit more thoroughly. This is what that gallon of the rescue looks like and you can then fill this in your own spray bottle if you wanna aerosolize it for use on walls or if you just wanna get a more uniform um, cleaning than a wipe is going to give you. I use these rescue wipes to wipe down other enrichment items as well, to wipe down transport tubs, to wipe down these exercise and activity stations. And the beauty of these wipes and the reason that actually this brand Rescue is recommended by Fear Free Pets, remember that I am a Fear Free certified animal trainer and I'm certified in the Fear Free Pets veterinary program and equine program. These do not have a smell that's aversive to most animals. So products like alcohol, uh, F10, chlorhexidine, bleach, some of the surface cleaners that you can buy over the counter would work just fine to clean products, but they have a very strong odor, they're perfumed, and the smell is oftentimes aversive to animals. And so Fear Free Pets recommends one of these accelerated hydrogen peroxide products, and they're pretty much odor free and the odor dissipates any odor that there is is going to dissipate after you've wiped it down and allowed it to dry just read the product container and make sure that you're adhering to the instructions for use and that whatever the recommended contact time is you're allowing that to happen before you then put an animal in it Thank you so much for watching and for spending your time with me once again for an episode of Serpente Sundays. And until next time, please remember to always be kind, love your animals, and use your trash for something else before you actually make it trash, if you can, if it's safe, if you think your snakes or cats or other animals would like it. I highly recommend it. Bye, everybody. Mm -hmm.